for like the past like good um, number of years, I haven't really been a huge fan of the Despicable Me franchise for a variety of reasons. Now, the first movie back in 2010 was honestly a movie I still consider to be really, really good, even great to an extent. Yeah, it may have some issues, like some bad humor here and there, and like the animation may seem a little bit dated, but I still find it to be a really charming film to this day. I think with how well written each character is, whether it be Gru, the girls, Dr. Nefario, Vector, all cast of pretty memorable characters that are all likable enough to make this a pretty likable film. It even has some high stakes and emotional cores that do remind me that this is back when Illumination actually cared about making you know, movies. And the reason I say that is because after the first Despicable Me, it was all downhill for the studio because every film after that either ranged from mediocre to garbage, with the only film I really, really enjoyed was the recent Super Mario Brothers movie, and that was only because I'm a diehard Mario fan myself. Like, I don't think people who are not really fans of the franchise will go into this movie and think, like, it's something great. Now, does that mean I think Despicable Me 2 is a bad film? No. It has some good moments. The characters are all still likable. I like how they attempt to give Gru a love interest, even if it doesn't hold my attention for most of the film. But I do like where they attempted to go with it, even if, like, I wasn't a huge fan of it myself. And I do think they were trying to push more minion stuff in the second film, which in the first movie they were fine on their own as side characters, but, like, only as side characters. Like, they shouldn't, like, be the main character of anything, like... They're, they're likable as, like, funny comic relief side gags. But unfortunately, Minions in 2015 happened, and it was the first movie in the franchise to gross $1 billion in the box office, even surpassing films that deserve to reach that status. A lot of films. Now, I don't think I'd say it's one of the absolute worst movies I've ever seen, because it does, like, have a pretty solid 30 minutes before it just completely devolves into just absolutely the most nothing cash-grab film ever. But at the end of the day, it's just still a very worthless cash-grab with minimal effort put into it, at least to me. Despicable Me 3, despite being the fourth entry in the franchise, was... Honestly, another nothing film. Like, I mean, I I guess they do try to give Gru, like, some more background with, like, revealing that he has, like, an extended family with, like, a long-lost twin brother. And the villain, voiced by Trey Parker, was pretty funny. But they don't really do much with, like, the chemistry between, like, Gru and his brother. Like, it's just, like, kind of... Like, it's... It's just, like, once again, another cash-grab film that honestly doesn't really have much of a purpose. Now, when I saw Minions Rise of Gru, I honestly expected that to be one of the worst movies I've ever seen. But, you know, it wasn't actually that bad. Like, they gave Gru, like, an interesting plot that actually worked pretty well. Like, with him developing, like, a friendship with, like, his biggest idol. Like, the movie is still, like, kind of bad because, like, it's, like, just another, like, kind of worthless Minions movie overall when you think about it, but it's, it's an alright, like, like, with what they did, it, it, it's not, like, it's definitely not one of Illumination's worst movies, at least in my opinion. Now, going into Despicable Me 4, I kind of just expected it to be another nothing film because the trailers literally did not interest me in the slightest. Like, <laughs> what's funny is, before, like, the movie even started, when I sat down in the theater, like, there was, like, a title card that said, like, the movie is about to start, and... <laughs> I expected it to be, like, an interview from, like, the production team, 
Kind of like how The Incredibles 2 started with that, like with the crew apologizing that there hasn't been a new entry for 14 years. And for this one, I kind of expected that, but they just played a trailer for the new Beetlejuice sequel titled Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice coming in September, which I honestly found like... I found it to be really weird, but I thought it was something worth bringing up anyway. Anyways, now to actually talk about Despicable Me 4. It was another Despicable Me movie, alright. Now, the premise of this film, just to, like, be simple, Gru finally had a baby. Yep, that's pretty much it. So, Gru decided to finally tie the knot with his wife and have a little infant, and the infant doesn't like him. So he uh, tries to bond with him more while he like while he and his family go out of town as like runaways because like a vil the villain of the movie voiced by Will Ferrell has like been trying to track them down and like he teams up with like this child villain voiced by Joey King named Poppy and you know what I do like how like this film does, like, Gru and Poppy's chemistry. Like, I, I see it as kind of a contrast to Vector, where, like, in the first film, Gru was, like, a bad guy, and Vector was also a bad guy, and, like, they were kind of competing against one another to, like, be the better one. And, like, now that Gru is, like, reformed, and it was interesting to see, like, kind of a good guy, like, helping a bad guy with, like you know, the heist they eventually pull off. And, you know, like, I did like how they they did it. Like, that is probably the factor of the film that I liked the most. Like, Gru and Poppy's relationship. It was surprisingly pretty fun to watch, like, them f sort of form, like, a bond between one another. Like, I mean, the movie is, like, like, it isn't badly written. I'm really just trying so hard to, like, say stuff about this movie because I honestly don't know what to say. Like, outside of maybe, like, a few good factors, it literally is just your typical Illumination movie. Like, everything is simple, everything is straightforward, nothing really has much depth to it. Like, not even Gru's relationship with, like, the baby is, like, endearing at all. Like, it kind of just, like, the pacing of this movie is just, like, really inconsistent. Like, because it'll, like, break up the plot of, like, let's say, Gru, like, trying to either help out Poppy or um, bond with his new son. And then, like, right away it'll cut to, like, shenanigans with the villain who whose motivation is that he wants revenge on Gru for something that happened in high school, which, I mean, sounds interesting on paper, but they, like, barely do anything with it. Or when neither of those are happening, they'll be doing their typical minion shenanigans, this time with the Mega Minions, which, I kid you not, surprise, surprise, it's literally just an advertisement for toys. I guess one more thing I could talk about is that when a certain someone showed up in the movie, I'm not gonna say when because I don't want to spoil it, I kind of shouted his catchphrase when I saw him, which kind of made a few people in my theater laugh, and it's probably one of my proudest moments so far. Yep, that's Despicable Me 4 for ya. Play it safe, Illumination movie, not bad one at that, but not one I'd honestly want to watch again. I'm sure kids will definitely gobble this movie up just for those Mega Minions alone, but adults are probably just better off, like, skipping this movie, if I'm being honest. 5 out of 10. 
a low one at that. Hey, but if you like the movie, I'm not stopping you from liking it, or if you want to go see it, then go see it. I'm not stopping you, it's just my silly opinion. Yeah, that's really about it. Thank you for sparing your time with me today, and remember to keep calm and let life carry you on.